We're scrolling down. Oh, by the way, Rob, Rob, a hype is, is wilder. That's a hype job. Well, there was a question. There's a question um, that came through on Twitter today. Um, and what was that question? I promised the guy. I promised the guy I would ask his question. Let me see if I wrote it down. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did. I did write it down. Pretty sure I did. Where is it? Okay. Okay. So I think, I uh, can't remember the fella's name, but you said you'd be watching so you know who it was. And it was why did, why did Deontay Wilder fall apart in the second, in the second Fury fight? Literally fell apart. So that should yeah, ask. Part because um, Fury was the better athlete going in with the superior Ray IQ, as I said, and he dissected him. He realized the mistakes that he made in the first fight, Wilder did, and he dissected, uh, he, um, uh, Fury did, and he dissected Wilder because Wilder couldn't, can't get any better. He's just bad. Most people that are bad have the brains to get better. He doesn't have any to get better. He is what he is. Fury has superior ring IQ, and that spelled the big difference in the fight, making all the adjustments to win, and he had the phys physicality to do it, and he had the hand speed to do it, and he did it. I mean, he, he backed him up. He said he, everything he said he was going to do, he did. He carried it off to perfection. I mean, before the fight, he said, I'm going to back him up. I'm going to work it behind my jab. I'm going to back him up, and he did everything he said he was going to do. He was very, very confident. I know somebody that um, a guy I know was talking to uh, Fury at the uh, top-ranked gym leading up to the fight, and he says, I got this. That's all he said to me. I got this. This is easy. That's how confident he was. So, so Fury knew. Fury knew. He was confident in what he was going to be able to, to get off on, uh, on Wilder. I mean, my position on Wilder, my position on Wilder is that he's just, he's just, I mean, he only just stepped up in a 43 fight career. He only really just stepped up. He fought Ortiz, who, okay, you have to give him a certain amount of credit for Ortiz, but he only, he only just stepped up, really, in the last, what, year or two? The last year, yeah. two years ago, two years ago. When he fought uh, yeah, two and a half years yeah. at the time, the reason I didn't step him up because he couldn't beat anybody. It was a charade. It was a big charade. It was a carnival atmosphere. That's what it was. It was a big charade. I mean, I remember watching, I watched back the Brazil fight, the Brazil, Dominic Brazil. And yeah. um, I remember looking into the crowd because there was a shot of Brazil in the corner. And uh, Deontay Wilder trying to put it on him. He actually got tagged in that exchange. But you, you looked in the crowd and there was no tension about who's going to win. It was just, yeah, go on, go on. It was like a football game where you, your home team was just far superior to the uh, to the incoming team. And people were just there to cheer for the victory. It wasn't really, wasn't really a match. And even when I saw Dominic, Dominic Breezel at the weigh-in, before the way, in the press conference, he just seemed to have zero confidence. Well, that's good. You're fighting C fighters when you're a world champion, and that's what you that's what you end up with. You end up with a gross mismatch. As bad as Wilder is, I mean, just imagine how bad Brazil is and the Gerald Washingtons and those guys. Yeah. So there, yeah. There's, there's the answer right there. Yes, yes, yes. So Ross Clark in the bit. Okay, so it's a terrible, terrible uh, indictment that uh, there is no confidence or very, very little confidence in Deontay Wilder having the ability to come back and uh, make, make a good account for himself. There appears to be very, very little confidence in Deontay Wilder's ability to come back and implement a 
a superior strategy to Tyson Fury. People just aren't giving Deontay Wilder much of a chance of being the superior thinker in the third fight, in the trilogy fight. But the question becomes, does Deontay Wilder have to be a superior technical fighter to Tyson Fury in order to win him, in order to beat him in the third fight, the trilogy fight? And I say no. Deontay Wilder does not have to be the superior technician or the superior thinker in order to in order to beat Tyson Fury. So theoretically, Deontay Wilder can still win the trilogy fight. However, or not however, he can still win the trilogy fight uh, with a big right hand, theoretically. But we've seen in the second fight, what we saw in the first fight, that uh, Tyson Fury is hard to land on by Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury implemented a strategy of muffling, muffling Deontay Wilder's work, walking him down pretty much all throughout the fight, approaching him, fainting, fake jab, real jab, stepping out of range, and then exploding into range. <laughs> And when he did, Deontay Wilder's only offense was to, was to jump back and throw from out of range Tyson Fury jumping back when necessary. <laughs> but fainting, if you just faint, you got Deontay Wilder all at sea. Just a little faint. Just a little faint will have Deontay Wilder <laughs> will have Deontay Wilder all at sea. And when he throws, what he has to do is duck. Just duck. Errol Spence there in the background. There he is. What you got to do is duck. Jump back. Faint when you're coming in. Deontay Wilder steps back. Do another little faint. Do another faint. And jump back when Deontay Wilder approaches. <laughs> It's such an easy game plan. Such an easy game plan. Boom. <laughs> One point to me. Okay. Who's going to, who's going to jig? Little step forward. Little step forward. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now let's have a faint. Now let's have a faint. Yeah. <laughs> all, all Tyson Fury has to do is faint. Double jab. It's like fencing. Okay. Boom. Ho, ho. Turn a corner. Turn a corner on it. Okay. Headlock. <laughs> Couple to the ribs. Couple to the floating rib. Not powerful shots though. Okay. Let's see. Let's see the pattern. Let's see the pattern. Okay. Oh. Hey. When Deontay Wild approaches, you just jump back and duck your head. Duck your head. He'll go over the top. Okay, that was a nice jab by Wilder. One of these rare nice jabs. Boom, double jab, okay. He stood his ground there, fine. Let's see what happens now. What's the next attack? Oh, oh. Wilder faints for a change. Fury with an assault to the body. Hey! Jumps in. Leaping, leaping jab, stroke hook. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, landed him with the jab and a couple, couple rights. Okay, so ultimately, ultimately, Rick Glazer, Rick Glazer's feeling is that Deontay Wilder is just not in Tyson Fury's league. Can't outthink him. Can't out strategize him. Boom, boom, boom. Damn. Can't out strategize him. 
and uh, he cannot outwork him. Okay, those are the words of Rick Glazer. What say you? It's the Raphael Dawkins. It's the Combat Radio. It's the like. It's the subscribe. It's the comments. It's the shares. And it is the hitting that bell icon to stay updated with news and notifications. What say you? Have your say. It's the Raphael Dawkins. It's the Combat Radio. And it's the Deontay Wilder looks set to be taking a battering in the trilogy fight. <laughs>